With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandsLots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, hour two. Hello, America. Welcome. It's Eric Erickson here across the nation. Phone number, if you want to be on the program, 877 973 Glad to have you with me. You can text data if you want today to 33777. That's my, the, the link that you get back is to my daily show notes. The reason I mentioned this, texting data to 33777, I do this every September 11th. My morning piece is the names of the people who died uh, from the North and South Towers and the airlines. Um, and if you wish to see the names, and you should see the names, you should remember those people. Text DATA to 33777. Just click through the show notes link and you can see. Uh, you don't have to pay a subscription or anything to get those names. Um, and you should remember the names of the fallen on this day. Now, I, I got a, I saw this story over the weekend, and this is right in y'all's wheelhouse. There's a, I have a passionate listeners when it comes to EVs, electric vehicles. And we mentioned some of the, the problems, and Tesla is largely the exception because of their supercharger network. And we have people who call in and they defend them, uh, but even oftentimes they'll acknowledge that for long road trips, things like that, they have a gas-powered vehicle. Well, 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 there's a, a, a television show that's no longer on the air called Veep. Veep was a, a comedy, rather crass, rather vulgar comedy on HBO, a lot of language. And it was about the vice president of the United States, what Selena Meyer was, was her name ultimately becomes president. She's an idiot. Uh, and everybody are idiots. It, it's uh, beautiful. Well, not beautiful people. It's it's non-Hollywood beautiful people who are shallow, dumb, and vain. That is Washington, D.C. And that was accurately captured in Veep. Uh, that people think that somehow Washington, D.C. is like House of Cards or Game of Thrones when really it's like Veep. It is very dumb people operating uh, in an insulated vacuum uh, outside of reality. It is some very shallow, dumb people. And it was accurately captured in Veep that Washington is, is a comedy more than it is a drama. It is a farce. This is from National Public Radio. When Secretary of Energy Jennifer Granholm set out on a four-day electric vehicle road trip this summer, she knew charging might be a challenge, but she probably didn't expect anyone to call the cops. Granholm's trip through the southeast from Charlotte, North Carolina to Memphis, Tennessee, was intended to draw attention to the billions of dollars the White House is pouring into green energy and clean cars. The administration's ambitious energy agenda, if successful, could significantly cut U.S. emissions and reshape America's lives in fundamental ways, including by putting many more people in electric vehicles. On town hall stops along her road trip, Granholm made a passionate, optimistic case for this transition. She often put up a photo of New York City in 1900 full of horses and carriages with a single car. Then another slide, 13 years later, same street, all these cars, can you spot the horse? There's one horse in the frame. Things are happening fast. You're in the center of it. Imagine how big, clean energy industries it will be in 13 years, she told one audience in South Carolina. How much stronger our economy is going to grow? How many good-paying jobs we're going to create? And where we're going to lead the world? So she does this road trip. Not every vehicle in the caravan is electric. The Secret Service rode in large, traditional, gas-guzzling SUVs. This is hilarious. She's an EV enthusiast. This makes her uniquely well-positioned to envision the future. 
but between stops, Granholm's entourage at times had to grapple with the limitations of the present. Like when her caravan of electric vehicles, including a luxury Cadillac Lyric, a hefty Ford F-150 and an affordable Bolt electric utility vehicle were planning to fast charge in Grovetown, a suburb of Augusta, Georgia. Her advance team realized there weren't going to be enough plugs to go around. One of the station's four chargers was broken and others were occupied, so an energy department staffer tried parking a non-electric vehicle by one of those working chargers to reserve a spot for the approaching Secretary of Energy. That did not go down well. A regular gas-powered car blocking the only free spot for a charger? In fact, a family that was boxed out on a sweltering day with a baby in the vehicle was so upset they decided to get the authorities involved. They called the police. (laughs) So you got you got the Secretary of Energy's motorcade is in route to charge. So they park a gas-powered vehicle in a spot meant for an electric vehicle to take the spot. A family with a baby in the car needs to charge their car, and the energy department won't let them because the secretary's coming. So the family calls the cops. The sheriff's office couldn't do anything. It's not illegal in Georgia for a non-EV to claim a charging spot. Energy department staff scrambled to smooth over, over the situation, including sending other vehicles to slower chargers until both the frustrated family and the secretary had room to charge. John Ryan, a driver of an electric BMW, pulled up after everything was settled. It was his turn to wait. It's just par for the course, he shrugged. They'll get it together at some point. They would be the government, the automakers, the charging networks like Electrify America and ChargePoint and companies like Walmart, Shell, and 7-Eleven that are entering the charging game. And they are, in fact, desperate to get it together. Car makers have hundreds of billions of dollars of investment on the line, and they're embracing Tesla's technology. Riding along with Granholm, I came away with a major takeaway. EVs that aren't Teslas have a road trip problem, and the White House knows it's urgent to solve the problem. So down the road from my house is a Circle K, and I noticed that Circle K is putting in chargers, electric chargers. Here's a problem, though. There are two, four, six, eight pumps at this gas station. So there are eight pumps. Each pump does two, so 16 gas-powered vehicles. And it takes five minutes. I have a gas-guzzling SUV, a Yukon Denali. I love my Yukon Denali. It fits my whole family and my family's luggage. We are not light packers, and we have a dog. If I'm low on gas, I can fill that sucker up. It takes five minutes. Put 20, 25 gallons in, and away I go. So they're putting in at this uh, Circle K where I am, I think four, two to four electric chargers. It will take between 15 and 30 minutes for a car to get the power it needs from those chargers to go on its way. While the rest of us get in and out in about five minutes. If you make the choice for an electric car, God bless you, good for you. But you are making a choice to hurry up and wait. Even a Tesla can take 15 minutes with a high-speed, high-capacity charger. The technology will undoubtedly improve, but here is the Secretary of Energy of the United States of America who has to have a gas-powered car block a parking spot from someone with an electric car and who in frustration calls the police because they're trying to get the secretary charged. And it takes time. And what a road trip this is. So they were going from Charlotte, North Carolina to Memphis. They went through Augusta, so undoubtedly... They went down uh, from Charlotte, 
they went down through Rock Hill on uh, I-77 over to Columbia, came through I-20 to Augusta. Uh, Grovetown is outside of Augusta. It's actually off the interstate. you got to drive a little ways off the interstate to get to Grovetown. Uh, those of you who go to uh, Augusta National to check out the, the golf there, you it's on the south side. It's, it's a little ways out of Augusta as well, but you can go through Grovetown. You get back on, uh, you get on I-20, and you head over to Atlanta. And then I guess if she's going to Memphis then, maybe they went up, uh, took the long way to Nashville, but I doubt it. They probably went over towards Birmingham and then took I-22 up through Tupelo, made it all the way to Memphis. Got on US-78 there. There's a lot of rural parts in there as well, and and you're gonna. There are lots of gas stations, very few electric vehicle stations. This is kind of a comedy of errors here, trying to show America just how awesome EVs are, and the cops get called on you because you're blocking them. And, and here's the other problem: in, in all reality, so Tesla actually has a very good charging network. If you go to Tesla.com, they have a tab on charging. And they have a trip planner. And they show you where the supercharging stations are. In addition to all the other charging stations, but in particular, uh, the supercharging stations, they have this massive network of superchargers across the country. And you can drive literally from Key West to Seattle using Tesla superchargers and assuming they're working, you can do it. The problem is that a lot of the charge stations in the country are not superchargers. So superchargers from Tesla use a proprietary connection. The rest of the industry uses a standard, and that standard is, is more like closer to a standard plug. The problem as well, though, is that those are high capacity, and even in high capacity areas, they sometimes aren't as powerful as advertised. So it can take a very long time to fill up the battery-powered vehicle. The problem here is not that people have electric cars. And, and pay attention here. That I've, I've got a friend. In fact, i got a friend in my office today, my CFO. He's got a Tesla. He loves it. i got plenty of friends who have electric vehicles. They love their electric vehicles. And if you're in a commuting situation, they work fantastic. The problem is the great American road trip problem. When you got your family in the car with you and you're taking a, a vehicle for a long distance, you need a big vehicle in many cases to hold your family. That vehicle is very heavy, it's very expensive with the battery, and it's hard to find a place that can charge with high capacity in a reasonable amount of time. So your family's having to log extra time wherever they go. You can't just spend five minutes at the gas station. Now, you may you may love it, you may have accommodated it, but not everybody has. And you have to admit, even if you have accommodated it, that it's a change in lifestyle. What this administration is trying to do and what Jennifer Granholm is trying to do is trying to tell you that it's not really a change in lifestyle. It's not really a change in your habits, but it is because it takes time. In cold weather, they don't work as well. In cold weather, the battery goes out faster. With my SUV, gas-powered SUV, it doesn't matter whether it's hot or cold. I'm going to get reasonably the same distance. With a battery, you're not. And you know, the, the left right now, their spin is like, well, because of global warming, we're not going to have all these cold days. No, actually, you are. You still are. You got problems. And the Secretary of Energy of the United States trying to paper over these differences instead had an episode of Veep where her staff unwittingly exposed the problems of the Great American Road Trip. And families, because of this administration's energy policies, are dealing with absurd prices for aviation. It's more expensive to fly than ever before. You're having more delays. Everybody's short-staffed. So a lot of people are hitting the road. To save money, they're driving their car. And those who take an electric vehicle are penalized because of the charging situation around the country. And most Americans don't particularly want them. Some people do. And they become evangelists for the electric car. But most Americans still do not want an electric car because of all the problems. And this administration trying to paper over the problems is actually undermining people's trust in the system to be able to convert. And even if they did convert, you still have the problem of all the other vehicles out there that can't convert. The tractors, the tanks, the, the, the law enforcement vehicles, they're not going to. 
And yet this administration would have you believe we can get rid of all fossil fuels. We're not going to do that. And the moment they finally are truthful, maybe more people will trust them about electric vehicles. All right. uh, Be patient with me. Those of you on the phones, I promise I will get to all of you after the next commercial break. This is just a short segment, and I don't want to start a phone call and then have to cut you off. Um, So we've been dealing a lot with the the situation where ABC products are taken off of Spectrum, Cable, and Charter, um, ESPN in particular. So ESPN basically was the impetus to start cable television, believe it or not. Uh, ESPN became the reason people started getting cable. People in sports across the country, ESPN provided it, and they were able to leverage that as an independent company. They were ultimately bought by ABC, and uh, they're less and less useful, ESPN is. And in fact, ESPN has gotten so progressive, SportsCenter has just become this dreadful, uh, woke TV show that fewer and fewer people watch. They have very become very progressive. And if you want an idea of this, let, let me expre- show this to you. Coco Golf is the winner of the U.S. Open, and there's a video of her. She's sitting on the bench after she wins. She turns around. She gets down on her knees. She bows her head, and she folds her hands up at her bowed head, is very clearly praying, like gets off the bench, gets down on her knees, and is clearly praying. She's been very open about her Christian faith. Sports Center grabs the video, tweets it out, and says Coco took a moment to soak it all in after winning her first Grand Slam title. That's that's what they say. Tony Dungy, the football coach, he's won on NBC's uh, football telecast for the NFL says, I hate to break this to you, Sports Center, but Coco Goff is not soaking it all in at the moment. She's praying. She's been very open about her Christian faith in the past. It seems pretty obvious what she's doing here. Sports Center being called out by Tony Dungy. And good for him for doing it, by the way, because Sports Center is just getting really obnoxious about this stuff. My goodness. Speaking of Christians, great company out there, Christian conservatives. They're called Patriot Mobile, and they want your cell phone business. They share your values, and they fund the causes you care about on the right. Uh, As they grow their profits, they grow their giving. That's why they want your business, so they can grow their profits and grow their giving. You can move your cell phone service to them. You get guaranteed great service. You're probably using the same cell towers right now anyway. And you can take your existing phone number to them if you want, or get a brand new phone number from them. It's patriotmobile.com slash Eric. That's the website, patriotmobile.com slash Eric. Or you can call them 972-PATRIOT. They have 100% U.S.-based customer service. So you're talking to someone here in the U.S. And tell them I sent you. You get free activation with my name. If you want to see how good the coverage is, though, go to patriotmobile.com slash Eric. They have an address map. So you put in your home address. They zoom into your house. They show you how good the 5G, the data, the voice is. Everything you need to have guaranteed great service with Patriot Mobile. Patriotmobile.com slash Eric or 972 patriot Do business with a company that shares your values and funds the causes on the right that you care about. Can we just acknowledge it is a little weird that uh, not only did Joe Biden want the complete withdrawal of Afghanistan to coincide with 9-11, but today the National Security Council spokeswoman released a tweet on behalf of the administration praising Saudi Arabia on 9-11. Just seems a little tone deaf, doesn't it? The phone number here, 877-973-7425. Uh, Patrick, I'm going to go to you up next. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Erickson. Hi there. Um, the reason of my call is I actually saw the second plane hit um, the Trade Center. I, I was working in a hospital in New York, Helen Hayes, and we had the opportunity to get locked in or to go home. So we pretty much went home. And, um, you know, I became prejudiced towards the Muslim community. Um, almost got into a fight, actually, because I threw a package of pork chops in one of the, in one oh, of the shopping carts. <laughs> ah. yeah. Well, yeah, but, yeah um, I, and I, I, I know it, it can have... 
tremendous impact in, in various emotional ways. I, I was actually reading during commercial break, Patrick, a one of the um, a, a attendants, a check-in attendants for one of the airlines that day, Muhammad Atta, one of the terrorists on 9-11, approached and the, the check-in attendant for the airline was just convinced that this guy had to be a terrorist and decided actually that that was some sort of latent racism on her part and let him board yeah. the plane where he did it. Um, it's just, it's, it's remarkable. The, the, and, and yet we now have seen so many people in Iraq and Afghanistan willing to take up arms on our side uh, and fight against Islamic extremism. That's good. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is. It, it, it's so now let me ask you this. Um, so y- you all went home that day on 9-11. Um, so were you in the streets when the plane hit or, I mean, how, how did that play yeah, out? The second plane. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, we were working in Helen Heath's hospital and we had the option to either get locked in or locked out. And I took to locked out because I wouldn't have known how long we'd be locked in, you know. And mm-hmm. we didn't we didn't jeopardize any of the work that we were doing. Wow. Um, yeah, you know, I, I have a, a buddy of mine and, and Patrick, thank thank you for that. I, I have a buddy of mine that was um he was on his way to work that morning. He worked, by the way, in the World Trade Center on one of the floors that the plane directly penetrated. And he happened to be late for work, missed his train. And my wife has a friend who was actually at a job interview in New York City, was headed to the World Trade Center, and was in high heels. And if you go to New York City, so with the subway, they have subway grates. And she wasn't paying attention, and she didn't know any better, and she walked across one, and her high heel got stuck in the grate and snapped. And so she had to run back into her hotel and change her shoes and when she did and came out, um, the the first plane had hit the tower, uh, and she um, missed, uh, wound up being late, uh, headed down there. Because at the time, remember, they thought it was a small plane, so the one tower was being evacuated. The other tower wasn't, and she headed, but she wound up being late, and the second plane had made impact about the time her job interview was supposed to have started. And I just, I, I know so many people, these random coincidences of people who were late, they missed flights, they uh, would have been on a plane or they were late. Uh, so many encounters and yet so many people still were there, were on the plane. Um, my friend on the plane that hit the Pentagon calling her husband and telling him and learning what had happened to the other planes and knowing she was going to die. Um and, you know, back then, of course, you had the plane, you had the cell phone, the, the satellite phones on the planes and people could make calls. Todd Beamer, of course, called and talked to the uh, operator in Chicago. They said the Lord's Prayer together. She told him what was happening and he told her to, to reach out to his family, tell him that he loved them and led the charge on the cockpit to take back the plane in Pennsylvania, wound up the plane. Eyewitnesses said it, it at one point was flying upside down before it crashed into the ground. The, they took the plane back and knew that they needed to kill themselves and that nosedive that plane into the ground. Otherwise, that plane would be a missile and a target and um, wipe people out. It just, it was something. Uh, and then there was the reaction, like Patrick said, and, and he told the call screener he he realized how wrong he was to have done that, um, throwing pork chops into the shopping basket of a of someone Muslim, the, the amount of hostility and hatred manifested after that, and, and then the psychological toll on the country as well. There was a psychological toll. I, a, a, I saw a, a friend, he said this earlier, it was another friend's tweet that, that maybe 9-11 was the beginning of the end of the American empire or something. You know, this goes back to what I said a couple of weeks ago. My wife rides a Harley. Um, she has a fat boy motorcycle. She loves it. One of the things she learned in motorcycle school, she took the lessons she convinced to convince me that she'd get a motorcycle. And one of the things they learned is that where you look on a motorcycle is where you're going to go. So if you turn your head and you look off a cliff on a motorcycle, you're probably going to go off that cliff. It's somewhat odd to me because, you know, I, when I drive down the road in, in my car, I can turn my head and look and my car's not going to veer that way. But with a motorcycle, you turn your head to look in a direction, you're going to go in that direction typically. 
And I feel like a lot of people have turned their head to look off the precipice. And in turning their head to look off the precipice, they, they've made the choice to go off the cliff, consciously or not. And there are a lot of people who now look back on 9-11 and think that that was the moment our country was broken. But, you know, uh, breaking this country, it also is a choice. You can disagree with policy leaders. You can reset the balance. I actually disagree with the idea that that, that was the beginning of the end of the United States. Uh, I, and I actually think that George Bush, in hindsight, made wrong decisions, but at the time, they did appear to be reasonable, plausible decisions. And going into Afghanistan, actually, I don't, it's been rewritten by non-interventionists to be some terrible thing. The Biden administration, of course, has, has wanted to claim it as such. But the reality is this, that uh, until Joe Biden evacuated us for several years, there had not been American casualties. We had finally gotten in a position where the Afghans were the ones fighting. We were helping them on the ground there. They were the ones dying for their country, not us. We had a, a pretty good system set up towards the end that people want to ignore. Um, there are people in this country, some of you included, and I don't mean this disparagingly, it's just true. Some of you have decided that uh, you wish to have the, the, the negative thinking about the country. You wish to decide that we are a country that is destroying itself. And there are signs that we are but they're not signs that mean it is permanent. There are certainly things we need to fix in this country. One of the things we deal with, though, in this, and it, it, we, we lose perspective on this, is part of what's going on here is something I think that does actually kind of come from 9-11. One of the things that happened on 9-11 is churches filled up. For many weeks, after 9-11, people were going back to church. Tim Keller's ministry in Redeemer, New York, really started to grow after 9-11. He and his sharing of the gospel message in New York uh, gave voice to people, gave hope and encouragement to people. But something else happened as well, I think, that we're now starting to see, and that is people who were religious— but had no connection to religion, started the development of their new religion. And we're seeing secularism more and more manifest as a secular religion. And I do think that 9-11 had something to do with this, that there were spiritual people who had no spirit. And they wanted to give voice to it. And it has, over time, since the towers fell, been made more and more manifest within secularism that secularism needs a spiritual component because all of us, by and large, feel some spiritual tie, even atheists to some degree. The number of atheists I know who are still spiritual in some way, and they want to find some voice to it. And, and we see this spilling out into society now in strange ways, like, for example, in California now, there's legislation where if parents don't affirm their child's tr decision to transition, their children can be taken away. I want you to listen to this. This is a uh, California state assemblywoman who is speaking on California legislation that would require a judges consider a parent's affirmation of their child's identity in custody cases. So that if one parent does not affirm a child's gender transition, another parent does, uh, custody goes to the parent who does. And in some cases, under some of the, the, the radical legislation being proposed in California beyond this, Parents could generally have their child custody taken away from them if they do not affirm their child's gender identity. Listen to this discussion from this California assemblywoman. That parents affirm their children. They have since the dawn of time. Typically, it happens when their um, gender identity expression matches their biological gender. But what happens is when it doesn't, that's when the affirmation starts to wane. And that's what we're dealing with here. Although it's called the TGI bill, they're not mentioned anywhere in the law. What's mentioned in the law is the child's 
gender identity and expression and the parents affirmation of that whatever it is because that is our duty as parents to affirm our children by the way that's not the duty of parents that's uh assemblywoman lori wilson in the the california state assembly and affirm their children that's not the duty of parents parents are not to affirm their children my gosh that would be horrible parenting But this is part of the manifestation of the secular religion that really has been on the rise post 9-11 as people who are godless deal with the spiritual component and have over time begun to process their emotions, their feelings, and their views. I do think that 9-11 pushed a lot of godless people into a level of spiritualism where that spiritualism is guided by the God of self. They have made perpetual idols in their heart of self. It has manifested itself in society now to the point that in California, the state legislature wants to be able to take your child away from you if you don't affirm your child's sexual identity. And notice it's gender identity, but now they conflate the two between sexual identity and gender identity. This is a, a an evolving religion as we speak. And people not grounded in traditional faith, well, you know, G.K. Chesterton said the danger of not believing in God is not that you'll believe in nothing, but that you'll believe anything. We're seeing this play out on stage. And I do think that the psychological spillover effect of 9-11 had something to do with this rapid escalation. I mean, we went from um, my gay marriage won't affect you to shut down your business if you won't bake my cake to uh, thruple should be fine to... Uh, my boy decides he wants to be a girl, and if you don't like it, you need to be put out of business and silenced. It's just this authoritarian religion running amok that can't abide competition with traditional religion, and now even governments are in on the act and wanting to shut people down. And I do think there's a cascading psychological effect from 9-11 where people were rushing into churches to find something, and there were those who could not bring themselves to embrace God but embraced idols and decided to worship those and found comfort in those and and now want others to have to bend to their own idol worship. Now, along the way, these people have also developed in their religion the way the world should work economically, and they're calling it Bidenomics. Thankfully, Americans for Prosperity is fighting back against Bidenomics. They want you on their side. They're doing a nationwide bus tour to fight back against Bidenomics. They're teaching Americans how to reignite the American dream. They're teaching you how to help your neighbor understand why Bidenomics is bad and how we can reignite the American dream. All you have to do is go sign up at americansforprosperity.org slash Eric. americansforprosperity.org slash E-R-I-C-K. You go sign up with Americans for Prosperity. You learn how to be a compelling activist. You learn how to make the case to your neighbor, even your state legislature and local government how to reignite the American dream, how to rein in Bidenomics, how to deregulate, how to spark the American entrepreneurial spirit. They've got over 4 million people who've signed up to be on their team. They want you on their team. They want to train you to be a better, more more effective conservative activist. It's americansforprosperity.org slash Eric, americansforprosperity.org slash E-R-I-C-K. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number 877-973-7425. Tom, you're going to be up next. Welcome to the show. Uh, thanks, Eric. Uh, I was just calling in with a 9-11 experience. Uh, mm-hmm. I was uh, in Washington, Dallas on the plane, uh, on the tarmac, next plane to take off uh, when they put a stoppage on, on all flights. And uh, it was just interesting. The the last guy on the plane uh, came in just before they shut the door. And uh, I was on third row first class on the window, and he sat next to me. And uh, when they when they put a stoppage, they said that uh, a plane had hit the World Trade Center. And so we just started a conversation. I said, well, where are you from? And he said he was from Bahrain. And I said, well, that's interesting. We've got stores over here in the Middle East. Um, I said, what, what do you do? He said, I'm a pilot. And uh, it was just that he was the last one on the plane. We, The plane that hit the Pentagon was probably the plane that took off in front of us. We never mm-hmm. did take off. And uh, anyway, I had several conversations with the FBI regarding 
uh, regarding him. And, and uh, it just that being said, I guess uh, what I'm really saying is I, I believe that there were a number of other planes or at least one other. Yeah, that, yeah you uh, know, Tom, probably, it, it's – it's interesting you say that because I, I think that's been forgotten. The number of stories from pilots and others um, either uh, finding a box cutter uh, in the trash on a plane, uh, things like that, that it, I, I'm i in the camp that there were probably uh, others. Uh, the 9-11 report was a little more inconclusive on that than I wish they had been. Uh, but I think it could have been even worse than what it was that day. Uh, and, you know, the other story there that day is the number of planes that were forced out of the sky and, and had to stop in Nova Scotia and the like and were there for multiple days. Uh, where I am here in middle Georgia, we had plane uh, planes land and, and had to be housed and people taken care of, rental cars found where they could. Uh, Americans helping Americans. Uh, a great day of bravery, even in a great day of tragedy here in the country 22 years ago. My goodness. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on ChumbaCasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.